commentary on Acts that the term that's used there means literally seed picker, gutter sparrow, worthless character. He had been put down heavily. It was very disrespectful. And yet he puts it aside. And he pays them a compliment. He says, you're very religious. We have that in common. I'm religious too. That compliment presupposes at least the possibility of their sincerity, even though they were pagan idolaters. And then he uses their own reasoning to reach them. He says, you accept that there are gods that you don't know. You've even got this altar out here to the unknown, unknown God, verse 23. And let me tell you about that God that you don't know, Jehovah God, the one who created the universe. You see, they left a hole in their wall, and Paul walked right through it and brought the gospel. Again, in a non-offensive way, he leaves them their dignity. He presupposes their possible sincerity. I think this is a loving approach. What a wonderful example for me when I approach a Catholic or anybody else that I disagree with. I recently read of a modern day example of this kind of loving treatment on the part of a gospel preacher, a gospel preacher in Texas who was also an attorney. He has written it up himself. I'm going to read it to you. And it led for an opportunity for him to evangelize. This happened in approximately 1990. The preacher writes this. We had met a little earlier, Alan and I. We were, faced off on op we were facing off on opposite sides of a multi-million dollar lawsuit. As an associate with a major Texas law firm, I represented the FDIC, that is the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which sued a prominent Houston businessman who defaulted on a long-term commercial lease. The businessman hired the other lawyer, the opposing lawyer, Alan, to represent him originate with men, and they're we got them from God and we passed them down from to you. Hold to the tradition which you were taught by me, Paul. Comes from God, he will say in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 37, the commandments that I've given you are the commandments of God. But why does he say traditions, why does he say hold fast to those things by letter or by word of mouth there in 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 15? Weren't all the teachings of God then written? The answer is a resounding no. In the first century, you see, if you think back to it, you will know that the writings were written in the text of the book that you have. I too believe that, of course, as I believe you do. Again, in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 37, the things I write unto you are the commandment of the Lord. So what Paul is writing down comes from God. Of course, our disagreement with Roman Catholics comes in determining how much of that truth was written down in the first century. And another church father who died in 256, the third century, he was writing to Stephen of Rome about the baptism of heretics, and he says, from whence comes this tradition? He's talking about oral tradition, you'll notice in context. Does it come from the authority of our Lord or the Gospels? Does it come from the epistles of the apostles? God wants us to practice those things that are... 